In this video, everything as you know is about to change and released on September 30th by revelation of the Holy Spirit, pointing out celestial patterns that are tied to World War I, World War II, with the expectation that World War III would begin in October. After that video was released, seven days later, accurately predicted the start of World War III on October 7th, when war broke out in Israel. And if you follow the news, tension is escalating to include other countries, such as Iran, China, Russia, the UK, France, America, the whole Middle East, making October 7th a very significant day. Which is why in today's video, we're going to take a look at the night sky in the early morning hours of October 7th and unpack another unique characteristic about this infamous day by linking the word Hamas found in the Bible and the location of the moon on that day, not only pointing out the location of Hamas's attack in Israel, but what the outcome of this war will produce for Israel. And I'll give you a hint because of the moon's location, this war will lead to the third temple, but you're just going to have to watch to find out why. And so with that said, welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jared. And if you enjoy the study of God's celestial signs and how they pair to real world events that come straight from the pages of Bible prophecy, then you have come to the right channel. And so welcome. And I pray that you've been having a wonderful and blessed week and that God's grace and peace is with you and not a worldly peace, but only a peace, a supernatural by design peace that Jesus Christ can give us. And so let not our hearts be troubled. We serve an amazing God. Amen. Now, before we begin, a couple of announcements. First, I just want to give a huge shout out to Brother Tom at his YouTube channel, Watchman River, as he discusses end time topics, including wars and rumors of wars. And so I like to think of Brother Tom as a second witness to the topics we discuss here. So definitely check him out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. I also want to give a huge shout out to Brother Bob at his channel, End Times Dream and Visions, as he puts together some remarkable videos, including giving life to image of dreams that other brothers and sisters in Christ have, and notably dreams about the rapture being tied to nuclear war. And so again, going hand in hand with much of the topics that we discuss here as well. And so I highly suggest you check his channel out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. And then my second announcement, well, really more of a favor that I'm asking, which is this. If you could hit the like button, comment on this video and sharing these videos really helps to put these videos into the YouTube algorithm, getting in front of more viewers. And by doing so, helping to sound the alarm about just how close we are to the imminent rapture of the body of Christ which is tied to nuclear war. And as the biblical definition of a watchman is to sound the alarm when he sees war coming. And so definitely share these videos for your helping to sound the horn. Okay, and now with all that being said, let us now go ahead and dive into today's topic, the Hamas connection. And so let us unpack it in this fashion. First, we will cover the celestial connection tied to October 7th with the moon being in the constellation of Gemini and how it points to three key facts. First and foremost, the fact that it would be Hamas. Secondly, where Hamas would attack. And thirdly, how this war will tie to the building of the third temple. As all three of these key details is tied to the location of where the moon was at in the early morning hours of October 7th. That'll be section one in section two. We will take a look at the word Hamas as it's found in the Bible and how it's uniquely tied to end time events and through the story of Noah. However, before we begin, let us highlight three Bible verses that are foundational for today's topic on God's celestial signs, as it's always important to have a biblical foundation for topics such as these. 
And so our first verse is Genesis chapter 114. That God created the sun and the moon and the stars for signs, seasons, or appointed times, which also include feast days. In addition, days and years. And one useful takeaway about this verse is that it is an umbrella verse, meaning it covers all of God's celestial signs throughout time, not just the end time ones. And not just specifically for Israel, this is for all mankind. However, to that point, and our second verse, is Psalm 81.3. As God has used the moon uniquely to highlight special elements about Israel. As the verse states, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. And so as we see here, the moon not only sets the Hebrew calendar as the first of any month on the Hebrew calendar begins on a new moon, but it is also tied to feast days. And so this verse is great because it highlights a connection, a tie-in to the moon and Israel. That will be very unique for this video. However, let's turn to Bible verse number three that's foundational for this video. And that comes from Jesus himself in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, when he states, there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress among nations. And the context of this verse is Jesus is talking about specifically the end times, which we are in right now. And so automatically, Jesus ties celestial sign events to distress among the nations, which we definitely see that happening. However, it's also worth mentioning that the Greek word that's used here for stars also is used for constellations, and that will be key for later on in this video as well. But moreover, these three verses will be useful as our foundation for today's topic, as an element from each one will be present throughout this video. Okay, let's start section one. That ties in the celestial sign, Hamas, and Bible prophecy. So let's begin. However, to do that, we first need to emphasize and underscore, bold and italicize, that the October 7th date is a part of a larger pattern stemming from the Taurus pattern. Now, if you're not familiar with this pattern, that's okay. However, definitely check out the everything as you know is about to change video as this video really culminates a celestial pattern that the Holy Spirit began to unravel five months prior. In this video, everything is about to change, highlighting that the celestial patterns of World War II are nearly a one for one of the celestial patterns this year. And so what I really want to convey is that these celestial patterns marking World War I and World War II and how we knew that World War III would start in October is the foundation pattern, the trunk of the tree, if you want to use that metaphor. And so now when looking at the moon in the constellation of Gemini, we are looking at a branch of this tree. Why? Because we already have an established pattern. Here, let me paint this picture of the significance of the moon being in Gemini on October 7th as our World War III connection and put it aside for a moment. And let's talk about the repercussions of World War I and World War II for the nation of Israel and see if there's a corresponding moon connection, just like what we have with our October 7th date. Okay, so with that as our premise, what was the result or conclusion of World War I for the nation of Israel? the Balfour Declaration, which was the UK's promise and the world power at the time, announcing their support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people, which at the time the land was occupied by the Ottoman Empire and would fall after World War I and become Turkey to a lot smaller region. But anyways, this opened the door for Israel to become a nation. And also what's really fascinating is the timing of this declaration as it was announced by Great Britain on November 9th of 1917, and then one year to almost the exact day, World War I ends on 11-11 of 1918. Okay, okay, coming back to our moon slide. Now that we know that World War I had a huge significance with Israel, what constellation is tied with Israel? Well, if you're familiar with our Revelation 12 sign videos, we have discovered that Virgo is tied to Israel. And what was the start date of World War I? July 28th of 1914. 
Now check this out. Check this out. When we turn to Stellarium, look where the moon is at. It's in Virgo. Demonstrating that the resultant of World War I would have impacts on Israel. Interesting. In addition, the moon itself is tied to Israel, as we discovered in those verses earlier. And so it's like a double Israel connection here. That's fascinating. God is fascinating. As the literal start date of World War I, God aligned everything in the celestial heavens from a prophetic standpoint is supernatural by design. Remember, I'm just trying to build up why the moon in Gemini on October 7th this year is significant and that it carries meaning. Okay, but not to get ahead of myself, what about World War II? What direct impacts did World War II have on Israel? Well, of course, it would solidify the Balfour Declaration and Israel would be given the land. However, through the atrocities of World War II, Nazi Germany, Hitler, right? Well, if you recall from the Purim Seda video, which I'll leave a link in the description for that, but in part, how the Holy Spirit began to unravel this pattern was connecting the fact that Haman shared the same sentiment as Hitler. Hitler was a modern day Haman. And you can verify this for yourself, which I suggest that you do. But during the time of Esther and the story of Haman, the 12th month of Adar on the Hebrew calendar, the sun is in Pisces and technically the rightmost fish of the constellation. And so rabbinical sources tie Pisces to Haman. Hence why he's quoted as saying, now I shall be able to swallow them as fish which swallow one another. As the Passover sun being linked to the first month of Israel would have occurred in the left fish, taking into account the procession of the equinoxes. And if you're not familiar with the procession of the equinoxes, here's a quick video as this astronomical phenomenon has seemed to cause a little bit of confusion by suggesting that feast days are off by month. Basically, the sun was in Aries at the time of the exodus out of Egypt, as Flavius Josephus points out. But the procession of the equinoxes causes the sun, let's say with the reference point of the spring equinox, March 21st, very slowly over time, now this is in 500 year increments, moves slightly to the right. And so by the time you get to Esther, the Passover sun is in Pisces. And so the right fish swallows the left fish. And to that point, our Antichrist Haman 2.0 eclipse on 420, 2023, as we saw on this slide, was in the constellation of Pisces. Hence, one of the reasons why we see tension between Iran and Israel flaring up right now, as the story of Esther took place in modern day Iran. In addition, that eclipse marked Hitler's birthday, who again had the same sentiment as Haman and was the same eclipse that occurred when Hitler came to power in 1933 through the sorrow cycle and all lumped into a pretty package of World War II repeating signs pointing to World War III for this year. Definitely make sure to go check out a lot of this older content. Even though it's older, it's still very relevant. And so long story short, Hitler being tied to World War II Pisces was tied to Hitler. Okay, now for our moon connection, let's check out where the moon was at at the start of World War II. So 9-1-1939, check this out. Check this out, saints. The moon is in Pisces. Isn't that interesting? But saints, check out the precision here. The moon, it could be anywhere in Pisces, but it's in the right fish the exact same side of Pisces associated with Haman as Hitler would be a modern day Haman and why the moon was in Pisces at the start of World War II. God giving a foreshadowing of elements that would play out during World War II, meaning the sentiment of Haman. And so what ultimately can be said is that World War I and World War II had direct impacts on Israel, and that the moon on the start dates of both of those wars were foreshadowings connected to Israel. And therefore, World War III 
will have a direct impact on Israel, as the pattern points out, and is why we should pay careful attention to where the moon was at on October 7th, especially considering we have a pattern that the moon is tied to a unique element on the start dates of World War I, World War II, and now World War III. And so, let's unpack that now. And so, here's October 7th. We have the moon in Gemini right here. And we have our World War III connection with Venus and Leo. Of course, that's the tail end of a larger pattern, the Taurus connection. But either way, that's the World War III pattern. Okay. However, now let me turn to this closer screenshot of the moon in Gemini. And now let's go through this. Okay, so for starters, this particular celestial sign is pointing to two aspects. One, the day of the event, and two, the conclusion or byproduct of this event that took place on October 7th. Okay, so let us now talk about the day of. And so to begin, if you didn't know, or maybe you do know, Hamas, the word Hamas is found in the Bible. In fact, turning to our interlinear Bible, the first instance of the word Hamas found in the Bible is Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. 11 is interesting. As you know, there's the 11 channel. So there's, so there's definitely something significant here with Hamas being mentioned for the first time in the Bible in verse 11. As the number 11 is an end times number. Not to mention even the context. With where we find this word being tied to Noah's flood is also tied to judgment. Coincidental? I don't think so. But... We'll come back to that aspect in section two. And so let me zoom in here so you can see this. And as you can see, we literally have the word Hamas found in the Bible. And as you see, it's tied to or translates to violence in the Hebrew. Okay, now if we were to click that, it would take us to this slide where it gives more of a breakdown about the word and then all the various instances that you see uh, it occurs in on the right. It goes down further, but uh, it's capped off at the screenshot. Now, that is for a reason, and I'll get to that in just a moment. However, if you notice at the top, there's our first instance, Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. However, it's our fourth instance that will tie us to the Gemini connection of where the moon is at. Why? Let's turn to Genesis chapter 49 and verse 5. Well, really all of Genesis 49. Well, part of Genesis 49 and verse 5 will be in there. So check this out. Now, if you're not familiar with Genesis chapter 49, it's a wonderful chapter. Remember, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob gets his name changed to Israel, and this is where we get the 12 tribes from, is from his 12 sons. But anyways, on Jacob's deathbed, he gives a prophecy for each one. Now, what's interesting is that many tie the 12 sons to 12 constellations. However, some of the ties to constellations are very straightforward. It's easy to see. Others, not so much. And so there is a little bit of a debate among scholars, the more vague associations. But with that said, this is just my take on it. So take it with a grain of salt. Although I think you will see merit from this perspective. Definitely do your own research. Come to your own conclusion. And so coming back to Genesis chapter 49, we have 12 brothers. There's 12 constellations. And yet... One of the constellations is a female, that's Virgo. And so moreover, there's already a counting problem, or is there, in the 12 constellations, and yet there are no females uh, mentioned here. So what's interesting is that Simeon and Levi, the ones that are highlighted and tied to our Gemini constellation, are uniquely grouped together. So in a sense, we have 11 constellations with one absent, Virgo. That makes sense. But before we get to our Gemini connection here, just as a reference point, so you can see this, in that there is a tie to constellations to the 12 suns. If we take a look at Genesis 49, verse 9, we see that Judah is a lion's cub. Now, what's fascinating about this is that when we turn to Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, Jesus ties himself to being the lion from the tribe of Judah. Well, that's a direct reference from this chapter. It's the first time that Judah is tied to a lion. It comes from right here. And so, of course, Judah is tied to the constellation of Leo, which in turn means that Jesus is tied to the constellation of Leo. Okay, good. That's an example. As a reference point, so you can see that this is not, you know, just making stuff up here. So anyways, coming back to verse 5, we have Simeon and Levi are brothers. 
Well, we already know that. So why does it tie it like that? Well, again, that's pointing to Gemini as they are the twins. And then it says their swords are implements of violence. Now, wait a second. We just saw that, that Hamas means violence. Isn't that interesting? And so when we turn back to Stellarium, we have the moon in the constellation that's tied with Simeon and Levi, but yes, also Hamas. Interesting. In fact, it even gets more interesting. As the two brothers themselves actually tell us something very unique about not only the day of the event, but what still yet future is tied to. Because where did Hamas actually breach the gate of and go into? What part of Israel? Southern Israel. Okay, hold that thought. Let's turn to this slide that shows the allotted lands for each one of the 12 brothers, with the exception of Levi. We'll get to that here in a moment. But notice we have Simeon in the south. In fact, if we zoom in, that's exactly where Gaza is at. And so when Hamas, tied to the constellation of Gemini, breached the wall, it was in the south, into the land of Simeon. Not only that, but here's an article clipping that talks about where the attack went as far south. Beersheba. That's literally the main city of Simeon. Interesting. So this connection with the moon in the constellation of Gemini not only is tied to Hamas, but also what side of Israel they would attack is profound on one hand, and yet on the other hand, very tragic. But as we know, God will avenge Israel. Just like Isaiah 44, 6 tells us, this is what the Lord says. He who is the king of Israel and his redeemer, the Lord of armies, I am the first and I am the last, and there is no God besides me. Amen. Or how about in Ezekiel 38 and 39, the Gog and Magog invasion? In chapter 39, verse 7, we read this. And I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not allow my holy name to be profaned anymore. But the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is coming and it shall be done, declares the Lord God. That is the day which I have spoken. Amen. And so now with that being said, that is Simeon. Simeon is tied to the day of the October 7th war, the causation for World War III. Now, let's talk about Levi. You see, the reason why Levi wasn't given any land was because Levi was the one tribe that would be in charge of the temple ceremonies, the Levitical priests, which tells us that the other aspect of this October 7th war and the outcome for World War III will result in the third temple. Why? Because Levi is connected to the temple. And as you recall, World War I and World War II on the back end of those wars had direct impacts on Israel. Well, the pattern follows. At the back end of World War III, it will have a direct impact on Israel. And Levi is that connection the temple, the third temple. And so, as you can see, this moon connection in Gemini tells us a whole lot as it gives us our three details. That A, Gemini, would be connected to Hamas. B, that Simeon from the constellation of Gemini would tell us the location that Hamas would attack, southern Israel. And C, that Levi from the constellation of Gemini tells us the ultimate resultant of this war, a third temple. And so that concludes section one. And hopefully, as you've seen, the Gemini connection is extremely fascinating. But before we move into section two, because we're right here discussing Gemini, the Holy Spirit reminded me of another Gemini connection and would explain why America is involved in this situation. And so, let me just speak to that real quickly before we move into section two. And so this additional detail comes from a video back in 2021, December 19th. It's a two-part series about the Shemitah Cycle 57A2. This two-part of the video series covered the American Super Shemitah. 
And what we discovered, fascinatingly enough, in that video, on the side here, was that America was founded as a nation of war, from its rise and its inevitable fall will be through war. Well, when we turn to this slide now, what was interesting, what the Holy Spirit revealed, was that when America came to power in 74, the sun was in the constellation of Gemini. And ever since then, when there were solar eclipses in the constellation of Gemini, major wars took place, or major war-related themes that would have a direct impact on America. From the American Revolutionary War, to the Civil War, to the World Trade Center attack, which would lead to the Iraq War, and eventually Afghanistan War, and even a downfall militarily with the Afghanistan withdrawal. And so anyways, the whole point was that celestial signs surrounding Gemini were also related to America and war. And so moreover, our World War III moon connection in Gemini is connecting war to Israel and America. Judgment coming to America through war. This war. And so what the Holy Spirit wants me to express is that this was a huge event for both nations. And so moreover, that is the extra Gemini detail that the Holy Spirit wanted me to add into this video. And so now coming back to our topic slide, let's move into section two and see how this triggering event is connected to judgment that comes to the whole world in the end times. And so bringing back up our interlinear slide with Hamas being tied to violence in the first instance, we find that in Genesis chapter six, verse 11, the story of Noah's flood. And this is how the attack of Hamas ties into this. What was the name of their operation into Israel? Al-Aqsa Flood. Isn't that interesting? That the first time we see the word Hamas in the Bible, it's tied to Noah's flood, and the name of their operation even makes that connection. Coincidental? I don't think so. As even the Al-Aqsa part is tied to the temple, what we just discussed in section one. In fact, just to double down on that, Bringing back up our Gemini, Simeon, and Levi connection, being tied to violence, Hamas, notice the names of their weapons, swords. And what is Israel's response operation to Hamas being called? Operation Swords. Isn't that incredible? Providing further confirmation that the constellation of Gemini and the moon is tied to this event our World War III event. And so, what's one conclusion that we can draw from this? Is that this event just triggered the judgment that's going to come upon the whole world. In fact, check this out. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, it states this, Because you have kept my word of perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of the testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world, to test those who live on the earth. You see, when judgment comes and we're raptured before that happens, this is coming to the whole world, just like Noah's flood and prophetically foreshadowed in the name of Hamas's operation. Or how about Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 and 38? For the coming of the son of man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And so moreover, we have a connection here with Noah and the flood as a foreshadow typology and in connection with Hamas also being tied to Noah and the flood through the name of their operation name, Al-Aqsa Flood. Judgment is getting ready to come to the whole world. But you and I, saints, will be raptured before that, as there is much hope in God's promises. Why? Because Jesus is always faithful. Like as we read in Psalm 36, 5, your mercy, Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Or Psalm 52, 1, the faithfulness of God endures all day long. And so, with all that being said, saints, 
let us recap what we have discussed today. In section one, we discovered that the moon, the day of and start of World War I, World War II, and World War III, the location and constellation always highlighted unique aspects about the outcome and how to relate to Israel. We also saw that in the instance of World War III, that the moon being tied to the constellation of Gemini was tucked away in connection to Hamas and that it pointed out the location that the attack would begin from, the south in the land of Simeon as one of the brothers of the constellation. And the other brother of the constellation, Levi, also tells us what the outcome of this war will be, the building of a third temple. And finally, in section two, we saw that even the name of this operation, our ox of flood, was telling us that judgment is getting ready to come to the whole world, as we know that this is directly connected to World War III, which indirectly tells us that the rapture is very close. And that is exciting news. And so with that being said, this is where we're going to end the video. I want to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to hit the like button and comment down below and share this to everyone you know. Please share these videos. God is unpacking some very interesting World War III details as the situation in the Middle East is growing day by day, not just between Israel and Hamas, but the US and Iran and Russia and China, the UK, can't forget about Turkey, especially Erdogan, as he is the Hitler pattern to our World War II connection. Erdogan is to our World War III connection. But moreover, World War III has started, which is why you need to share these videos. Why? Because as watchmen, according to Ezekiel chapter 33, verses one through six, as watchmen, we need to blow the trumpet when we see war coming. So by sharing these videos, that's exactly what you're doing. You're helping to sound the alarm. And it may not be this video that you share, but at least share one of these two or both. I'll leave a link in the description to it as we can demonstrate that World War III just began because of God's faithfulness in his celestial signs, marking World War I, World War II, and World War III all the exact same. And so, with that being said, I love y'all, God bless, Jesus loves y'all, and he's coming very soon. Amen. Maranatha, King Jesus.